We've got a Back to Basics edition this week of Ask the Tech Guy. What is a GPU and how does it work next? Ask the Tech Guy comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether employees are working in the office or remotely, visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Ask the Tech Guy is brought to you by LastPass. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. Hello, everybody. Another Monday. Leo Laporte here for Ask the Tech Guy. This question from Solai. Hey, young man. Thank you, Solai. What is the purpose of a graphics card in a laptop or a PC? Thank you. Well, thank you for the question, Solai. It's a good one. And it really uh, takes a little bit of history to explain why we even have graphics cards. In the early days of computers, remember, it was a green screen with text on a black background uh, or a, maybe a amber text on a black background. Uh, the graphics could be stored in a small amount of memory. And each, each part of the memory, each cell of the memory just had that area of the screen, which really was the size of a character. So you'd stick a T in that uh, cell and a T would show up on the screen. That was called a frame buffer. And in those days, that's all you needed. Although there was some pretty clever engineering. If you ever want to uh, find some fun stuff to talk about, study up on how Woz built the frame buffer on the original Apple One. It was sheer genius. He had to do it with as few chips as possible to keep costs down, and he did some amazing things. Uh, nowadays, we've come a little bit farther. Obviously, we're not just putting characters on a green screen. We're putting beautiful, vivid, realistic graphics, and that's why we now have something called graphics cards or graphics processors on our computer. These are chips that are dedicated to drawing graphics up on the screen. They'll also have a dedicated area of memory, much like that original frame buffer, but a lot bigger and with the capability of displaying not just characters, but dots of color and more. So all computers have to do this. Now that we have graphic user interfaces, not text-based interfaces, as soon as we went to GUIs, um, a computer had to have a way of drawing onto the screen, drawing those graphics onto the screen. And even today, most computers, that's built into the chipset that the computer is using. It's part of the processor. Um, on your phone, it's a special dedicated area of the processor. On Even on motherboards of many computers, it's built into the system on a chip that's in that computer. We call that sometimes motherboard graphics or built-in graphics. But if you want to play more graphically intensive games, if you want more sophisticated on-screen graphics, you'll move to what we call discrete graphics or a dedicated graphics processing unit. A GPU as compared to the CPU, which is the brains of your computer. They work together. The CPU will calculate what should be on the screen, send that information to the GPU, which then has the responsibility of rendering it. GPUs have special chips built into them that are designed spe specifically for displaying graphics. Things like um, the capability of moving big chunks of memory in one instruction, in short instructions around on the screen. Uh, special processors for doing the math that needs to be done to calculate uh, edges so that they can be smooth instead of staggered. Most graphics processors units think in geometric terms uh, called voxels or little triangles instead of dots and they map those triangles onto objects do a lot of sophisticated calculations so really a graphics processor on a computer has two main functions. It has special chips designed for doing the high-end mathematics required to render the graphics, and then extra memory used for storing those graphics before they're blasted onto the screen. So typically what happens is you have a frame buffer that is built by the graphics processor, and then a command puts it on the screen. That's what you see while another frame is generated and then blasted on the screen, another frame is generated. And that happens 60, 120 times, sometimes even more often per second to give you fluid 
animation. It's really an amazing thing. Our graphics processors are so good at math that they're often used for other math-intensive uh, things like artificial intelligence. NVIDIA, which is one of the big manufacturers of graphics uh, or designers of graphics chips, does has a whole uh, auto division where they do smart uh, cars. They do intelligent uh, auto assist for driving. And all of that's using s the same kind of processors, but the math is, is, is different, but sort of similar. So these, this intense capability, this mathematical capability can be used in a lot of other ways. Machine learning, artificial intelligence. Um, GPUs are often done used by computers when you're editing video and there's a lot of processing that needs to be done to the video. The GPU is a much more efficient way of doing mass operations on large areas of memory, things like that. You always will have on any graphics operating system you use today, you will have a dedicated part of that system that just does graphics. It may not be a separate chip. It may not be separate memory, but you'll always have that uh, on a higher end system where you want better performance. You'll even have a dedicated card or a dedicated area, dedicated chips, dedicated memory just for the graphics processing unit. Nowadays, Everybody's got a GPU. It's just how powerful your GPU is. I hope that makes sense. I'm trying to keep it at a basic level. It's designed to do all that fancy mathematics that are involved with putting graphics up on the screen. That's basically what a GPU does. Uh, I hope that answers your question. I appreciate it. If you want to ask me a question, ask the tech guy at twit.tv. Uh, our show today brought to you, as always, by LastPass with your IT department doing such a big job. There's new threats, new regulations. Strong security is more complex than ever. LastPass allows employees to do their work securely, whether they're in the office or at home. LastPass never stores your master password, so hackers can't get to it. Encryption happens exclusively at the device level, and every device, iOS, Android, Windows, Mac, before it's sent to LastPass for safe storage. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out what they can do for you. Lastpass.com slash twit. And that's it for Ask the Tech Guy. Send me your questions. I'd love to get you on the air. Meanwhile, I'm Leo Laporte. Have a great week. We'll see you next time on Ask the Tech Guy. Stumped on a nasty tech conundrum? Email Ask the Tech Guy at twit.tv.